you live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook. We're waiting to get live on Instagram. There we go. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Good Friday. Morning. Happy, happy. Everyone have their cup of coffee. <laughs> Okay, just give me one second. Take your oh, look, time. our live captions are on. That's interesting. Okay, cool. I don't know what that <laughs> means, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, let me not do that. Okay. Okay. All right, sending request, joining, <laughs> allowing. I should be on momentarily. Fantastic. It's circling. Mm -hmm. There you are. Here I am. Yay. Here I am. A little crooked, so let's <laughs> let, let's get me a little straightened. Good morning, good morning, Sandra. All right, and we'll get this straightened. And I think we're off to a good start. What do we think? We are good to go. Fantastic. Good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode number sixty-three of Window Treatment Friday Live. How are you, Kim? I'm doing well this morning. How are you, Vita? All good, all good. I'm excited to talk about our new topic today, yes. and we're broaching layered window treatment. So mm -hmm. um, what are we going to be talking about, Kim? Um, well, now that, you know, before this, full disclosure, I, we t I sent a whole bunch of the slides over to Stephanie, who handles a lot of our social media, both for, uh, for Window Works and for Vitalia Inc. And I was saying, I forgot which pictures I sent <laughs> to her. But then, I, like, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, yeah. So um, you're in for a treat because I'm going to show a throwback one that was one of my first big drapery jobs that I ever did here at Window Works. Mm -hmm. And um, it is very, I, I think you will appreciate it, Vita. And it was probably the most layers I've ever done on a project. <laughs> yeah. I think I know the one you're talking about, so I can't yeah. wait to get to it. Yeah. All right. So without further ado, let's start with um, this one. Very nice. Okay. So this is a project that we did for House of Funk. Uh, for I Sandra. figured it's so beautiful. As yeah. soon as I saw it, I'm like, yep, that's got Sandra's touch all over it's, it. It's uh, one of Sandra's projects. And what we mm -hmm. have here are, um, it's a two layer window treatment. So we have uh, Grace Ritchie motorized woven woods um, that are lined, installed behind a pair of stationary um, inverted or euro pleat or top tack pleat however um you know potato potato when it comes to the pleat style or the name um mm -hmm. installed on uh these uh very gorgeous um iron rods from campbell ironworks nice so um the challenge here with the whole layer treatment it wasn't so much the single window that we're looking at straight on mm -hmm. um because that was just very simple very easy we put the um, we put the woven wood right up under the the drapery rod. It's kind of like a Sandra specialty. She like loves the whole. Let's make the ceilings feel a little taller. Especially this room was a, was um, a step down from the foyer, so the ceilings okay. already were a little higher mm -hmm. um, compared to the other room. We also did the um, the formal living room. This is the den, mm -hmm. and um, so. The single window, no problem. The challenge was the larger picture window, that molding from the window butt up underneath the crown molding. Mm. So it was the challenge of getting the layered window treatment right under the rod and then the projection that we had for the center bracket and the ends that were on the wall mm -hmm. were completely different. Ah. So that's where the challenge in you know laid where i had to figure out okay so if my molding is projecting off the wall mm -hmm. x amount of inches then i'm adding a uh, waterfall woven wood motorized mm -hmm. so that head rail is about two and a half inches okay mm -hmm. so how far is that going to now stick this out and what do i need to make my center bracket and mm -hmm. what do i need to make the end brackets and what was really great about campbell ironworks is that you can get very, very custom with their hardware. Mm -hmm. So we were able to make custom projections because I yeah. think it had to be something like 
some obscure number like six and five eighths like who like really like nobody carries something like no, that no like, no so it was like very very custom so that was the challenge in figuring out when you're doing a layered window treatment these are kinds of things that you have to think about like mm -hmm. where is the 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 roman or shade being installed how far is that projecting are we installing it in a way where here's your molding can you know the top of it go on top of it so that mm -hmm. this way you're setting your first layer back a little further but mm -hmm. in this case everything was at the same level so it all kind of just pushed everything out mm -hmm. so nice. you guys did a great job though yeah. you know you. it's interesting all these little details you know the five and five eighths mm -hmm. or the, the, the various projection of the bracket nobody would ever think that you know people usually think oh can't you just throw up a couple of brackets yeah. and done with it and uh it's never that simple even with ready-mades but anytime you do custom it certainly is never that simple no and then of course when you start layering things on top of each other and on top of the window and have to think about the different projection of the molding and the bracket and the each layer of the treatment it just adds so many layers of complexity <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> all right nicely done thank you and so i have this as a video so let me oh, start it nice. Look at you, uh -huh. we're getting so, fancy here at WTF. I know, we're oh, getting <laughs> So this is actually kind of a continuation of your picture too, and I didn't realize mm -hmm. it because these are also woven wood shades. Nice. There are underlay, which is an underlayer to the stationary drapery panels on each side. And the just like in Sandra's picture and your picture previously, the woven wood was positioned all the way at the crown molding or at the rod, essentially as mm -hmm. far as the rod would let us go, and not really inside the window. And interestingly here, the window was deep enough to go inside the window. So ordinarily, I would take it inside the window, but here it the, the gets really dark, right? This picture nice. gets super dark because this is supposed to be blackout. And yet, you know, a little tangent about blackout, do you oh. see how that, that little sliver of light that goes at the very bottom, right? So unless you put a bottom rail or like a bottom lip you'll have you'll have that sliver of light there or you make the drapes fully operable there's always that yeah. yes more labor more fabric right more more complexity yeah. um so so what I, but where I was going with that is it was this designer who here, it was Linda Phillips design. So mm -hmm. Linda Phillips is a designer on the main line, west of Philadelphia, um, a very talented, uh, traditional, usually designer. And she actually was the one who pushed me to mount these um, up above the window. And even though, like I said, there was so much projection available in the window. And usually if there's enough depth in the window, not projection depth, I'm sorry, if, there, if there's enough depth, mm -hmm. it would always go inside. I mean, I wouldn't even fathom going outside, but she's like, no, 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 I don't want to have that depth space. She called, you know, we call it depth mm -hmm. space above, which is the wall space above the window. And uh, I want it completely covered with the shade. And when the shade is up, I want it to look like as if it were a valance yeah. behind the draperies. Yeah, that's I I am just like Linda and Sandra where I like to bring it up as high mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing that that dead space, quote unquote. Yeah. Um yeah. it's not my favorite, but in certain situations and certain circumstances you have no choice. Um mm -hmm. and then it's also, you know, personal preference, but I like the way that she brought it up now with these woven woods are they a classic style where they have a self balance or are they yes. water okay they're not waterfall they're a classic mm -hmm. so they do have a balance mm -hmm. okay so yeah. that's another detail to think about as well like the, with sandra's they were waterfall so they projected mm -hmm. off the front where these kind of project off the back Right here, Linda wanted to have it as close to the window as possible. Mm -hmm. So, which I agree with her. I like my shades as close to the window yes. as well. Um, but you know, there's something to be said about there's that additional line of the valance that is at the top, right? So mm -hmm. if you're trying to make the whole shade look like a valance, then having that additional line of the valance at the top, one may say, well, that's a little bit distracting. Why is it there anyway? So it's just different ways of looking at things. We're here to mm -hmm. give you possibilities and uh, give you ideas of, of what's available out there. And you can make your own judgment on what you'd like and don't like. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Okay, so now this project was one that we did for Ellie Moreau's designs out of Westfield. And this layered look, it's a little hard to tell in the picture, but it is a double um, rod, a double traversing mm -hmm. rod. Mm -hmm. So in the back, we have a baton draw 
um, shear, unlined shear. And in the front, we have a baton draw um, blackout drape. So this is another way to look at, you know, two layers. It is possible with two rods that you're able to make them function. Um, depending on the width, this was a very large expanse. If I recall, this was probably almost about 11 and a half feet wide. Wow. So yeah, we went with um, decorative traversing rods, not rods with rings or C-rings, because you could imagine trying to pull that yep. with rings, all mm -hmm. that, you know. All and it looks width. pretty high, so the, the, yeah. the, that length adds to the effort, yeah, of, the moving effort of moving it over. Exactly, and we wanted to bring it up as high as possible. She has a really um, unique ceiling detail going on in that space. So um, there was no crown molding that we had to um, line it up to. I believe we lined it up to another line in the room. So a lot of times if there isn't a crown, I often will turn around and say, okay, let's line it up with, you know, this over here, or this bookcase or this detail that you have in this space. So this is just another um, example of how you can do two layers of window treatments. And it gives you flexibility when, you know, the client wants their privacy, they're able to have the shears closed, and then they get the best of both worlds. And so when they want, you know, their room dark to sleep, you just close the shears because this is um, on a sliding glass door also going out to a balcony. That's what I figured. It yeah. doesn't show it in the picture, but yeah. somehow it exudes it. Yes. <laughs> I knew there's yes. some sort of so a door happening there. No, so it's almost like the door almost goes the whole expanse of the, um, of the wall. It's, you know, it's two doors that slide out. So mm -hmm. that's another thing to think about, um, you know, putting a shade on there would have just been a little clunky because then where yeah. do you hide it and everything yeah. else. And we had the wall space and um, you know, I feel like sometimes people get a little afraid on sliding glass doors like, oh, what's my stack going to be like? Is it going to be too yeah. much fabric? Is it going to be too much drape? The answer is no. Um, <laughs> and this is a perfect example of that um, because it shows you that, yes, it can stack pretty tightly and it, that has to do with the type of fabric, the carriers and things of that nature um, that you pick, the style of pleat. So, uh, yeah, all the fullness that the, you know, all the, have, things. all the things, but there are ways to make it stack pretty tightly. And um, you can't tell because it is a blackout panel, but this mm -hmm. panel, I think, is most of it stacked on the wall, like a little bit goes into the window. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nicely done, nicely done, Kim. Mm -hmm. I also, it has nothing to do with window mm -hmm. treatments, but I think that's a wallpaper in the back of the bed. Yes. Um, in the herringbone pattern, I really like it. So yeah. I have to comment on that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very pretty wallpaper. Very pretty. It's even prettier in person. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, and, and that's something to mention. Pictures never do these projects justice, no. you know. No. We can talk about them. We can give you, I feel like with every picture, like, well, you can't tell this, but there's the detail. You can't say, you can't tell because it's dark. You can't tell because it's cut off. You can't tell because it's just the picture, right? Uh, but, you know, the actual projects are definitely so much better in real life that any picture can ever, even I think the most professional picture can show. Yeah. Now, I often find... Uh, Oftentimes when I have to go back to a project, whether it's like, oh, we want to do this one room that we didn't think we wanted to do, and then I get to see it. I was just, um, I just measured another uh, a follow-up project for uh, JLA, mm -hmm. and we had did this client um, back bef uh, last summer, and mm -hmm. I walked in, I was like, wow, it's so nice to see it in person. <laughs> I was like, I never get to see it in person. I always see it like, I'm either on there on the construction site or there's no furniture, there's no, you know, there's nothing. So it was, it's <laughs> always great to be able to actually See it. That's right. We usually see it way before it's finished or when the window is naked and most time when the room is naked too. Yeah. And then our installers go back and they get to see the final project. We get to see the pictures. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, okay. I mean, it looks pretty, but like it, it's different when you get to see it. A hundred percent. Okay, this is a very traditional project. We did it recently, believe it or not, for an older couple, so no surprise there. The designer here is Holly Pecora of Holly Pecora Interior Design in the Philadelphia area. And this was just a simple double window in the living room. There is a sofa in front of it. It's a very standard and common here for the Philadelphia area. And the couple and Holly just wanted to have the shears in the front and stationary panels in the back, kind of similar in the way to what you had described in the previous mm. picture, just not as big. This is certainly not a sliding glass door. Just, just, just a little thing that we wanted to frame. So we used a double rod here. The, it was the a decorative rod in the front. It was a resin rod with ring about one and three eighths of an inch mm -hmm. in white finish. 
it was a double bracket and in the back of the bracket we used just a um a track like a traverse um, track, mm -hmm. like a curse traverse track kind yeah. of thing, um, where we uh, attached the uh, the shear, and the shear can move over if they want it to, and the drapery panels just kind of flank it on the side and um, you know frame it out. So just a simple project for us. Don't do a lot of these kinds of things anymore, actually. So this was a really when when we decided to do this topic, this was a really fun one to kind of come across mm -hmm. and be like, hey, we just recently did it because <laughs> um, it's a more of a traditional approach, I feel, to things, especially with this kind of hardware. Yeah. So you know, there's still projects like this still do exist, oftentimes for older clientele, more traditional. Yeah. No. With and I remember when they all of a sudden came out with a double bracket within like with decorative rods like this that you were able to do the back rod was it you were able to do a decorative I remember when I first started at window works Billy just doing like a Kirsch like super fine rod or an architrack and like yeah. you'd have to figure out how do we make it pretty and how are we going to get it and you'd have to drop it down and it couldn't be like in the other picture where the layer was just about even both exactly. layers were even right. mm -hmm. you, you know, back back in the day, um, <laughs> the second layer was always dropped down a little bit lower. So mm -hmm. those are things that you had to kind of take into account with um, like deductions and things like that and what kind of fabrics will work, which ones will spring. So it's all those mm -hmm. things that you kind of had to think of, um, you know, when doing when figuring layer. these out. Yeah. yeah. When, when working with double brackets and mm -hmm. and lay or rather the, the rods that on the bracket that stack down versus on the same level. So which is what, you know, which is the case here as well. Now, did you actually. guys try to line up the fabric, even though the rods were not, um, the you know, in, in, right. So the rod was lower and yeah. here, no, we didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, the customer was happy. It was like an older couple and this yeah. is exactly how they wanted it. They weren't concerned with them being, you know, hundred percent lined up. Um, they were just really happy with just the way it is. You know, yeah. they, they are so, um, I find sometimes when working with older couples, we have to be careful about trying to kind of bring them into the 21st century because yeah. they're really quite happy with what they <laughs> had for years and years and years. <laughs> so if that's what makes them happy and this couple was moving from um, their home, the, whatever home they had, uh, they were moving to like a... Um, like a not a 55 home. plus community, but even like an older community, whatever okay. that is. It's not quite assistant living, but it's like a big building with, with like small apartments yeah. in the building. Yeah. So they, I think it was kind of a stressful situation to begin with, to leave what they've known behind all those mm -hmm. years. So whatever we could preserve of their older life, not mm. older, you know, but the previous life, yeah, uh, the previous if, if, even if it's window treatments, that's what gave them a lot of um, peace mm -hmm. and comfort. So that's what we did, even though it may have gone against mm -hmm. some of my better window treatment judgment. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be, well, always you have to be a human being first, a <laughs> window treatment designer yeah. second. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, okay. There it is. There's the big kahuna. So <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so this was, was one of the first drapery projects that I kind of did on my own. Luann was, um, you know, assisting me in the back end, but it was one of the ones that um, I had to lead on my own and whatnot. And this is four layers. Oh, my three. God. Four. And I think, to the, I don't think I've ever done, this was the first and only time I ever did Four layers. And this oh, it is, is for layers. Yeah. I see it. Holy yeah. moly. And this was for a younger couple. This wasn't even for like. What? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This was a younger <laughs> couple. She was had a very, very traditional sense. Oh, Renee's like a classic. Whoop, whoop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, so, Renee. Um, yeah. So with this, we had a, we had a board mounted swags with cascades on the sides, um, a pair of stationary tie back panels. Oh, actually, I'm lying. I think this had blackout roller shades in the windows, too. Oh, get out. I think so. <laughs> How many more layers can you yeah. fit Yeah, anyway, there? but we're going to concentrate on the drape. So then you had the stationary tie-back panels. You like had... Yeah, the, millennial. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. You had drapes that open and close blackout, and then shears. Those shears also moved. So 
here's my first, this was my first lesson with layered window treatments where I had to learn to look up at the mm -hmm. ceiling mm -hmm. because it's hard to tell here. Mm -hmm. There's a vent. There's a vent. There's a vent. Yep, I knew where where, where you were going. <laughs> and this, were you like this much off the vent? Uh huh. And uh -huh. you were like, oh my gosh, please, please, please fit in. <laughs> yes, because when I had done that, I know exactly what you when felt. we when we measured it, and I didn't know I had to look up. You know, I was a young twenty seven year old. Like I, I just knew like let's do straight panels and some kind of a cornice. And then she threw this at me and I'm like, okay, let's do it. And um, I still remember uh, we were in the middle of renovating window uh, window works here, the showroom and Luann and I, we had, we're sharing an office in the showroom and the, the island here. And we're going through it and Billy's looking at like, you know, I'm like, how big do I make this board? And I'm sitting with him doing the work order. She's like, I, the board needs to be about 10 inches to fit all these layers. And I'm like, oh, and he goes, are there any vents in the ceiling? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't, I was like, ooh, is there, are there? Yeah. Wait a minute. I don't know. And uh, this was before like an iPhone. I had a Blackberry, like this is how long ago this was. So there yeah. wasn't like, you had to like, let's go back into the digital camera and see like, let me see my pictures and you know, it's hard to tell, but yeah. So when you're deal dealing with multiple layers like this and a ceiling mounted balance, um, lesson learn or the lesson that I learned here was look up. So you only make that mistake. It worked out. It was, so it wasn't like a heart attack once, but yeah, in this, I think Billy actually wanted 12 inches just to give it a little bit of breathing sure, room. Sure. Yeah. But we were like, you get 10. You get to so, uh, make it do. Yeah. Well, thankfully, some of those layers were stationary. So yeah. you really need a lot of breathing room when the layers are functional, they're movable. Right. Because w when they move and they start scratching against each other, yeah. that's when you have a real problem. But if problem. they're stationary, you have a little bit more saving grace there. Yeah. So, and then even with the swags, like you have the first layer of swags, and then behind it is another layer, like even though they're mounted on the same board, and then you have all the trim. And the yeah. tie backs and the whole nine. So I thought this this is probably my largest layered window treatment. And this is on a larger window. And we did something very similar on the two singular windows. Oh, my gosh. On the like, you, were, you were really excited when this topic came up then, right? You were like, I know exactly what yeah, I'm going to What was so <laughs> funny, it's one of those that I kind of like blocked it out of my mind. Oh my God, and then yeah. I was looking through yeah. old pictures. And I was like, oh, this was my first project i should <laughs> highlight it i had, think i have pictures of the side windows too so and the side oh windows God. had just as many layers except oh we only did one tie back because there was either a fireplace in between the two single windows so and it was like one swag or mm -hmm. two maybe two swags and then the one cascade going into the corner so right, right. i'm surprised you haven't been back to this house to redo it and you know kind of modernize she, it a bit she was very very traditional like oh my goodness yes yeah, so, wow. like, i mean i love me some swags but even for me, this is too much, you know, and all these like swags on top of each other. I like them a little bit more, you know, I like swags, but more streamlined, more, wow. more modern swag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job though, thank Kim. Good you, job. Thank you. Made it work. Yeah. And so did Billy. Okay. So um, here's a very common situation where you layer window treatments. You have blinds or anything, shades, blinds, any kind of functional treatment inside the window. You have enough depth here. We did a two inch faux wood blind on this really large window on the side and there's a singular window up front. So we just did two inch faux wood blinds and they provided privacy and sun control. You just tilt the core, the veins close, you tilt the core the other way, the veins open. But of course, just having the blinds isn't enough because all they do they don't really provide any aesthetic necessarily mm -hmm. all they do they're very functional they're a little bit cold they are quite architectural but they don't they don't have color they don't have texture they don't have that that beauty and an aesthetic that you're looking for in the room so what the designer opted for here and the designer is um, Callahan interior design out of Doylestown Celeste Callahan um, she is retiring unfortunately Aww. but we've done yes as that's what's happening in the industry a lot of new folks but a lot of retirement happening as well. So we've done her work for the last um, 15, 16 years, pretty much. She was one wow. of my initial designers that first year that I started. So 
we did take the rod all the way to their crown molding yes there's crown mm. molding so we took it all the way to the top have the rod at the crown molding have the two drapes on each side of the window just framing the window very common style in the window treatment world so we did it both on the smaller window as well as on the larger window as well so but that's kind of a simple way to yes. layer window treatments um, without a whole bunch of challenges because the blinds went in inside the window and the drapes went on the outside it's always nice when there's a deep enough inside clearance where the oh, wood blinds that. can sit yeah. in it's always exactly. when you have like this much <laughs> that everyone's emotionally attached to the moldings uh -huh. and you're like it doesn't fit <laughs> I know I know I know and you know what there was time in my life where in my working life when I was like I'm going to try. I'm going to do my very, very best. And then the installer gets there and he's like, what were you thinking? <laughs> I know you're trying to make them happy, but if I have like a quarter of an inch, how do you think the screw is going to fit there? And, you know, he's trying to like screw it in, not, you know, you usually go upright, mm -hmm. either up or to the side. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to do like diagonally and the molding cracks in the meantime and you know creates all sorts of challenges. Yeah, so. yeah, it goes, it's on an angle. It doesn't sit flat. No, I just... I learned that very quickly. If I was just like, nope, nope. It's not and working. I, like, what can I fit here? Nothing. <laughs> right. A right. sheet of paper. I know. I know. Sometimes they'll look at us and think that we're magicians. It's like my favorite is like, well, I love my view. I want to preserve my view fully. But at the same time, I want to have complete privacy. I'm like, okay, lady. <laughs> I say, I just tell sometimes, I'll say, I'm not Harry Potter. There's no wand back here. That exactly. Can... That's, yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. I'm like, you know what? I mean, that's just a fact. You know, if it's this small of a projection, I can't, I can't fit it in. There's certain facts in life. You know, there's, you know, there's geometry and math and physics. And I wish some of those laws weren't uh, so, but I wish gravity wasn't a thing, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, but yeah, cracking me up. Thanks, Renee. You like you having your coffee and having a little crack up session with us? <laughs> you know what's funny? I don't see the comments anymore. Oh, I, I don't do. know what happened. So, do. hi everybody. Hello. <laughs> okay. All right, what do we have next? All right, oh. we're done. This was a quick session today. Yes. <laughs> a I'm little just... bit of a comic reprieve. <laughs> sometimes we need it um so that concludes our episode before we uh let you go there are a couple of things that we want to uh share with you um on the window works website we have a free ebook so if you are new to the window treatment game uh luann wrote an ebook uh architectural digest isn't coming 10 things you need to know about custom window treatments it's really like a you know, Window Treatments 101 Guide. So if you want to get your free copy, head on over to the Window Works website and you can download it there. Awesome. And the same thing for Vitalia Inc. We also have a little free gift for you. It's a curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. It's called 37 and a half window treatment ideas to use, steal, swipe and make your own on your next design project. And to keep up with all things Miss Luann, um, head on over to the podcast or her website, luannigarra.com. You can listen to the audio version of Window Treatment Friday. Um, that's where this whole Window Treatment Friday Live originated from. Uh, Luann and Vita do an episode where they discuss all topics of window treatments, really. Nothing's kind of left, you know, no, no, <laughs> nothing's off the table. table. Just, right, exactly. As a matter of fact, we just recorded an episode this past Tuesday. Um, it will air whenever Luann decides to air it. It's called um, How to Get and Stay Organized in Your Window Treatment Business. So, something mm -hmm. I think we all need to do. It's yes. probably good for both designers and window treatment pros. And uh, um, yeah, I'm excited about it. <laughs> it's interesting. You know, I usually do the outline. And I create the content. Mm -hmm. I had like a whole bunch of different strategies laid out for us and a bunch of tactics mm -hmm. within the strategy. Guess how many we got to on the episode? Two. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> we just started talking yeah. and yapping away and, you know, exchanging and bantering and, 
and there and there went 45 minutes and we had both of us had to get off so we're like okay great episode we're gonna do the other six and however many i had there on the next ones that could be six episodes each topic i think that's exactly what's gonna happen yes <laughs> <laughs> all right guys listen if you're a, a, an interior designer in the philadelphia area who is looking for support with your window treatment project. So who's looking to elevate their window treatment game, please give me a call and I will help you um, figure out what it is that we are about and to see if we're a fit. We are a all-inclusive, concierge level white glove service as it relates to window treatments exclusively for interior designers so pm dm call me or email me and i'm happy to discuss your next project or answer any questions you may have and if you are in the new jersey or new york area and you have a layered window treatment project that you just don't know how to handle it um even if it's a four layered swag number <laughs> Um, we Especially would, if it's a four layer yeah. <laughs> But even if it's just two layers, you know, you I'm still good. may need some I'm help. I'm good either way. Um, <laughs> we would be more than happy to help you on those projects. And if you have any awning projects, I know the summer is kind of rounding out. However, um, you know, there's still time to get your awning and enjoy it for the fall and then for next year. <laughs> Renee, thank you so much for being our loyal listener here and viewer. Love, love, love having you here, girlfriend. Yes. Um, Renee and I are putting something very special together for later in the fall. So I'll make sure to mention that when we have um, more details ironed out. Right, Renee? Right, girlfriend. All right, you guys. Again, thank you so much for joining us. This was episode number 63 of Window Treatment Friday yes. Live. Please join us here every Friday on Facebook or on Instagram at 9 a.m. where Kim and I talk shop all about window treatments. Everything you ever wanted to know but never needed, never knew you needed to. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. Have a great weekend. All right. See you next Friday. Bye-bye.